Can you imagine you actually being a person that would save a child's life? You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need special training. But what we'll talk about today will literally change the lives of thousands of children. And you do not want to miss what we're going to share. Welcome to this edition of Living on the Edge with Chip Ingram. The mission of these daily programs is to intentionally disciple Christians through the Bible teaching of Chip Ingram. Today we're taking a short break from our regular teaching format to do something a little different. In this program, we're sharing an interview Chip conducted with a close ministry friend that will open your eyes to a very pressing opportunity we as Christians have to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Well, there's a lot to get to, so here's Chip to introduce his guest and the topic of their discussion. You know, every now and then, I'll be praying or I'll meet someone, and you know how your mind processes and thoughts come to you, and you know, you're praying one day and the same thought keeps resonating. And I had a friend, he introduced me to a fellow named Joe Knittig, and uh, Joe has a very interesting experience in life, and he developed a thing called Care Portal. And I'm going to tell you more about it, but I want you to know that everyone in the Living on the Edge family has to hear this story. And every one of us has an opportunity to literally change the course of a child's life. Uh, we all know that God has told us to love Him with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and strength— to love our neighbor as ourself, right? That's what it is to be what I call a Romans 12 Christian. And the fact of the matter is, is that of all the people Jesus would say are the most vulnerable. And he says, suffer not those little children to come to me. I don't know about you, but when I've been able to help the life of a child, man, I know that God is pleased. Something deep happens in my soul and um, it really boils down to that's how we love our neighbor as ourselves. So, uh, Joe, I just want to welcome you to the program. Thank you. It's an honor. Well, it's good to have you. And maybe before we talk about Care Portal, could you just pause and give us a bit of background about your life so people get a, a mental picture of, like, who is this guy that Chip is talking to and where is he coming from? Well, I'm a, I'm a kid that grew up and was very fortunate that I didn't end up in foster care, but grew up with no identity, grew up with uh, a chip on my shoulder, grew up with shame and wanting a way out, and the Lord brought me out, and uh, I became a trial lawyer in the process of, of that. The Lord called my wife and I to be givers and investors and children in the process. We met an amazing man and his wife who started a ministry called the Global Orphan Project invested in churches for churches to care for children and families in crisis with the ministry being anonymous to the children and families in crisis. And once I saw that in action, I was sold and done and I gave my life to it. And so now that's what I get to do, serve the bride of Christ as she serves children and families in crisis with the church being the hero. Well, Joe, this sounds Honestly, a little too good to be true. Care Portal allows us to actually find out needs of children in our community, and we can help them. And it sounds so simple. It sounds like an ordinary, regular person without much training could literally change the course of a child's life. And so uh, all I have to say is, Joe, tell us the story Give us a picture of how it got birthed, how it's grown, what it actually does, and then I'll follow up with sort of the kind of questions that I think everyone listening on the edge of their chair are going to say, oh, Chip, ask him about this or ask him about that. So we really do very, very little. The good news is that the church is rising up in this hour and doing quite a bit, notwithstanding what your listeners may hear and the discouragement they may receive. The best way for me to understand this and to paint a picture is to talk about child welfare in America for just a few minutes. Many of us that are probably listening to this have always thought of the orphan crisis as being a third world thing, and nothing could be further from the truth. The scourge of fatherlessness is ravaging communities all over the world. 
And so we have a major crisis of fatherlessness and family breakdown in the richest country the world has ever known. And what that means is we have about 4 million children every year in the United States at the front door of the foster care system, more than 400,000 that are in the foster care system, and more than 100,000 that are immediately adoptable. And if you think about the enormity of that problem, you got to break it down because child welfare operates locally, county by county. So as bad as that bad news is, here's the amazing thing. God has gone before us. If you go to any county in America, you're going to find an unbelievable treasure trove of care stakeholders. So you'll go into a county and you're going to find child protective services. You're gonna find school teachers, social workers who interface with families breaking down in real time. And when you go around them in a county, you're gonna find local churches that cross boundaries of race and class and culture with a common playbook of, hey, let's live this gospel in action. It is in our playbook to be those who support families in crisis and care for kids who've lost their families. So you're gonna see all of them and you're gonna see business owners and others in the community who may or may not be believers, but have a heart for children. So you have all of this right there. Here's the problem, they're disconnected. We do connection to make sure that I can get a dozen eggs dropped at my front door so I don't even have to move through an app. We have connection that I could make sure I get a private vehicle to pick me up and take me to the airport on an app. We have connection for me to find a place for me to stay anywhere in the nation, anywhere in the world through an app, all these sharing platforms. We don't have a connecting platform for our most vulnerable children and families. So when you, when you boil it all down and you think, how do I tackle such a God-sized problem? You dream big and you execute small. So Care Portal is a share caring platform that operates locally. It goes to the social workers who see the needs and we say to them, hey, if you see a need of a family in crisis, it could be a grandma caring for her grandkids that if she doesn't get help with her rent, they have to go into the foster care system. It could be a foster family, an adoptive family that are struggling and they need a little help. You enter that into Care Portal, and then we're going to recruit churches, and we're going to ask churches a simple question. If there's a hurting child in your zip code, are you willing to see the need? You don't have to do anything if you don't want. We're just going to create a James moment here. So we do that on a local basis. We started it in April of 2015 in Austin, Texas, in one county. We just put this platform together. We basically duct taped this thing together, made it look pretty. And then the church moved. And today, from one county, 2,443 churches in 22 states have served 82,922 children. And that is increases by about 100 a day. And we're anonymous to it all. It's all the church being the hero to children and families in crisis and making relational connections around real-time needs. It's Uber for child welfare. That is actually amazing, Joe. Now, let me, just for our listeners right now, let me tell you what I think I heard so I'm really clear on this. You have this massive need that most of us are unaware of all across America, way bigger than most of us even think. We don't see it, and yet inside every community, you have people who want to help. And it could be a business person or a church or a social worker, or a school teacher. They see this need. They see this kid and they go, oh, my, we got to do something. But no one puts this thing together that could say, hey, all of us who care about children, here's one place where we can surface the needs. And then you circled and then you said, let's make the local church sort of the core responder. Now, is that exactly what you've done? You nailed it. And um, we call them care connections for community to be community around the needs of kids and families in crisis. Exactly right. With the local church always at the relational point of care. 
because we're really not just trying to facilitate transactional support. We're trying to catalyze relational connections at an acute moment in time for the church to be the church. And then we stay anonymous. And it's remarkable, Chip, what can happen when egos and logos get put down. You're listening to Living on the Edge with Chip Ingram. Before we hear the rest of Chip's interview with Joe Kanittig, let me remind you that we are a listener-supported ministry. Your regular gifts help us create programs like this one, develop new resources, and encourage pastors globally. Prayerfully consider becoming a monthly partner today. Then go to livingontheedge.org to give a gift. And thanks so much for your support. Well, let's get back to this insightful conversation. Well, Joe, I believe you're exactly right. When egos and logos get put aside and when people have a mission, I mean, the kind of mission where you want to help a child and someone, you in this case, has set up a system in a way that's simple, that's clear, that that we can all get involved in, we can make a difference and we can do it right now. That's why I wanted you to come on the program and, and tell the, the Care Portal story. There's got to be some pastors out there and some parents and teachers and, and, you know, electricians and carpenters and stay-at-home moms and, you know, people driving in a van right now or their SUV thinking, hey, would you guys shut up now and tell me specifically how could I get involved? I, I get it. I care about kids. I want to help. Will you just tell me how can I help? So, Joe, Tell me, 30 seconds, this is how I can get involved in Care Portal and see very visible needs. We would learn the church in the area and how it works, and you could actually make the difference in a child's life today. Go to careportal.org, and on the homepage, we've made it very simple. You'll pick what category you fit in. There's a place for you to enter your name and then we're off to the races. So it's a super intuitive platform. Just go to careportal.org and get started. We'll put that up on our website as well. And I just um, don't wanna be harsh and don't want people to understand or in any way misconstrue what you're doing. Uh, The foster care system is vital. Uh, There are kids that are abused. I mean, as a pastor for over 30 years, uh, I've been involved in lots of situations, unfortunately, where I mean, kids are at a place where they have to be taken out of the home for their physical or emotional safety. But what the reality is, and all the statistics tell us, is that there's a lot of kids that get put in the foster care system that don't need to be there if they had a bed or uh, if their family could take care of a, a small need here or a small need there. The kids could stay in an intact family. And what we know is when children stay with their parents, the probability of their life's success skyrockets. Tell us a little bit, Joe, about what happens statistically to children that end up in the foster care system and why we need to help them before they get into the system. Because what what you really keep saying is, you know, it's like— being in a stream and it's polluted down here. And and really everything you're doing is saying, hey, why don't we go upstream? And if we can stop the pollution, the problems, the struggles up there, then you don't have them downstream. And that's really what Care Portal does. Uh, But some of the things that you and I have talked about earlier about what happens when a child ends up in the foster care system, it's hard to hear, but our listeners need to hear it. Would you share that with us? So once they go into the system, the outcomes are statistically set. We know there are bad outcomes uh, because there's so much trauma involved in all of that, trauma upon trauma. So once kids go into foster care, about 75%, if you went right now into the prisons in the United States and you said, if you were in foster care at all, raise your hand. And if you went to girls and women who have been rescued from from sex trafficking raids, and you had them all in a room, and you said, how many of you were in the foster system? 60% would raise their hand. And if you went to the homeless population, and you said, how many were in in foster care? More than 50% would raise their hand. And these people would be disproportionately black and brown. 
That's what you would see. Foster care is ground zero for systemic change in our nation. That's not me saying it. That's just stone cold stats. And what I would also say is, you know, it does, we need to do more prevention, wrapping around mom, dad, grandma, before kids get dropped in the river. And we also need more foster and adopt, pulling Moses out of that river. And Care Portal, statistically, 60% of the needs that are met are prevention, 40% are foster care, adopt, adoption, and reunifying biological fam families. So we need both and, and that's how we built this platform. Well, Joe, uh, those statistics are alarming, staggering, disturbing. The reason I wanted you to come on the program is those were the kind of things that I thought to myself, you know, people need to hear that. And then when you begin to hear how we can make a difference, in fact, there was a story of, of a family and um, social services came and they didn't have enough beds for their kids. And, you know, there's laws. And if there's not a bed for every child, they were going to take these children away from their parents and put them in the foster care system. Now, as well intended as that is, those statistics play out. And instead, someone said, you know, my kids are grown, actually got bunk beds, disassembled them, put in the back of the truck, uh, brought one of their kids with him, uh, went over and gave them the bunk beds, and that family stayed intact. And that so much of what Care Portal does is stuff like that. And quite honestly, as I was uh, getting to know you and, and vetting you and making sure uh, just, you know, between you and me, uh, is this really legit? Because it was so amazing and, and the numbers of, of children you're helping and how it's grown. It's the hand of God. Beautifully stated. That is what Care Portal does. It facilitates relational micro partnerships with the church at the relational point of care for real time needs of real kids and families. And your story is correct. The number one need entered into care portal by child welfare professionals are beds because in the, in the child welfare system, even when you think about the big issues of our day, the issues of racial reconciliation, which are huge issues of the day, when you go to low income communities, often black and brown neighborhoods, there, if, if I went up and down the, the street of the church that I go to, which happens to be in a low-income neighborhood, and I just did a survey of how many children have their own bed, it would not be 100%, I assure you. And it would not be abnormal. It wouldn't be, there wouldn't be anything wrong with what's happening in those families. They're healthy families that are fighting and scratching and clawing to survive. But the rules get written often by those who see it differently. And they've decided this is kind of a Huxtable's thing. Every child must have a bed, otherwise it's neglect or abuse. And so when a child welfare worker is in there, he or she is not some mean ogre, you know, that's doing that. They're just, they've got to follow their rules. And they're like, hey, look, and it breaks their hearts where they're like, I don't want to take grandma's grand grandkids. She's an amazing grandma. Can somebody help her with beds and then better yet, get into a relationship with grandma and go to the church and actually say, hey guys, can you walk this walk? Could this not be the evangelism portal? Could this be the care portal? And let's let God be God because he does amazing things when there is sincerity in the connection. So beds are entered in more than any other need and, um, and there are you know, bills, beds, and so you really nailed it. And there are so many, not everybody can say, Chip, if I went to a church with 200 members and said, who will be a foster parent? You might get two or three, but if I went into that church and said, who's willing to help meet the needs of real children and families real time, including beds and mentorship and bills, maybe 50 raise their hand. I'll be on that team. And then go back a year later and ask those 50 who have now had cross-cultural relationships and say, and they, they know more now. And we know this because we have data. We know this not because we're just hey, whimsically saying, yeah, we have a, a university studying it. 
85% of those who respond to care portal needs say that they're now going to be more active. In 51% report, they made a meaningful ongoing connection. If I go back a year later and said, who's willing to be a foster and adopt parent? I'm gonna have more response and I'm gonna have better quality responses because the veneer of emotion has been removed and people now have a genuine heart and a better understanding. So beds, bills, relationships can reverse the foster crisis in America by the power of Jesus through the church. What kind of sermon would that be? Seven years from now, front page news, New York Times, CNN, Fox News. I don't know what to make of this Jesus character, but it turns out the church in America has united in concerted action and has reversed the foster care crisis in this country. And of all things, racial reconciliation is breaking out. Of all things, unification of the church is breaking out. This is about far more than the children. In fact, I'll go this far. I don't think the church is being sent to the children. I believe the children are being sent to the church to purify and unify the church. And the church is rising up and saying, yes, it's beautiful. Wow, Joe, it's amazing how God works, and it's amazing how he's working. When Jesus says, suffer not the little children to come to me, I think basically we have a command to make a difference. Can I encourage you? Don't just listen and think, oh, wow, that's interesting, and and I'm so glad I turned into living on the edge, and isn't that wonderful? Would you today, I mean today, go to careportal.org, Put in your zip code and realize you can be a difference maker today. Joe, thanks so much for being with us and may your tribe increase. Thank you. You've been listening to Living on the Edge with Chip Ingram. Chip's guest for this program has been Joe Kinetic from the organization Care Portal. Their website again is careportal.org. That's careportal, all one word. Dot O-R-G. Well, now here's Chip with a few final thoughts to share. As we wrap up today's program, I hope that uh, this interview inspired you, encouraged you. See, I believe that being a fully committed follower of Jesus demands that three things have to be operating and relevant in our life. Uh, around here, we call it bio, just for short, bio for life. And the B is for um, coming before God. I really believe that people have to have a regular diet of renewing their mind in the Scriptures, reading the Scriptures, studying the Scriptures, um, memorizing key passages, renewing our mind. And the I in bio is for in community. That's we have to do life with fellow believers. And then the O in bio is for on mission. We were called to make disciples as you go. It's about this light, this grace, this love that has to pour out of us into others. And today was about helping you get on mission. It was about any person of any maturity. You could have trusted Christ yesterday, or you could be a believer for 30 years and be an elder or a pastor or or a women's Bible teacher. It doesn't matter. You could go to Care Portal. Dot .org and put your zip code in and you and your roommate or you and your family or you and your friend could actually make the difference in a child's life today and that's being on mission and lord i thank you for joe i thank you for his faith his commitment the team their integrity and i thank you that you have called him to love children and that we get the opportunity to team up with him to love children. And Lord, we know because of what you have said and how you acted that you find great delight when these vulnerable, marginalized children get rescued. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great application for us to think about, Chip. As we wrap up, I want to quickly thank those of you who regularly give to Living on the Edge. You're making a big difference in helping Christians live like Christians. 
But if you're benefiting from our ministry and haven't started giving yet, let me encourage you to join the Living on the Edge team. Now, you can do that by setting up a monthly gift today at livingontheedge.org or by calling 888-333-6003. That's 888-333-6003 or visit livingontheedge.org. App listeners, tap donate. And thanks for doing whatever the Lord leads you to do. Well, until next time, this is Dave Drewy saying thanks for listening to this edition of Living on the Edge. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like to watch more content like this, click and subscribe here to our channel. And by the way, if you'd like to know more about Living on the Edge, find out about more resources, maybe get on the mailing list, go to livingontheedge.org. See you next time.